it's like the summer of Sam, except it's the fall of COVID. Wouldn't that be nice? Happy autumn, friends. If you are new to my channel, welcome. And if you've been here before, welcome back. So Halloween is right around the corner and I love it because lockdown or not, I get to channel my inner witchy poo because I'm still in the broom closet. I made a few lacy, albeit simple and weird wrist candies. So hold on to that broomstick and your pumpkin spice latte because we're flying the hands first into it right now. Enjoy. I've got a measuring tape, pins and needles with thread, fabric chalk, three quarter inch Velcro brand sticky Velcro, snap fasteners, hooks and eyes, inappropriate use of a sewing board for hammering, hammer, eyelet base and anvil tool set, six millimeter eyelets, scissors, ColourPop resin kit, first time I'm using this, wax paper, medium grade sandpaper, plastic medication cups, popsicle stick for stirring, nitrile gloves, Mod Podge, I prefer the satin finish, paintbrush, torch lighter, a dome cabochon resin mold, small piece of polyester, different sizes of ribbon. I actually decided against the metal one. Chicken vertebrae from mom's chicken soup scraps. And in order of appearance, these lacy bits, which was a hard choice I might add, is during the season of All Hallows Eve, there's enough black lace to sink a ghost ship. First thing I'm gonna do is measure my scrawny wrist, add a couple inches, Starting with one inch ribbon and the spider webby lace. Take the whole thing, slap the two outside face together, and sew. I will show you a couple variations and ways to fasten it together. And even though I don't always do this, it's a good idea to iron the extra bit flat. Cut to size, leaving a good amount to hem under. Get rid of the phrase with the lighter. I love doing this with the ribbon, it melts so easily. Fold those sides under. And so. Ugh. Moving on. Get your sticky back Velcro pairs to place on the ribbon band. Depending on the side from which you want to fasten your accessory, as long as one side is on the face, the opposite side goes on the inside. Clean up the excess thread after sewing the Velcro on to reinforce. Want to get a bit fancier? Here I've cut the ribbon and hemmed the sides in and then pleated the web fabric once on each side to match the length of the ribbon. Pin the outside face together and sew that. I skipped the hemming of this webby lace to get a different finish. This material doesn't fray, so it turned out to be wholly unnecessary to use the lighter. <laughs> Don't do this. Oops. So cut that off instead. I've got the hooks and eyes here. I'll sew on the eyes first, matching up the thread with the seam. Then sew on the hooks and match the placement of the eyes.
and you have a different look. Now you've got easy and edgy. And here, something a little more elegant. Next up is the stretchy number. The stretch is a nice feature as it makes for a one size fits all. I'm not fussy about how much I turn in here. I just want the curves to match up but all the while ensuring that the edges don't come together. In fact, I want to keep a good enough space in between them. Sew those two edges and cut the extra thread. Before making any permanent moves, decide how many eyelets you want to have and where you want them. With fabric chop, give yourself a reference by marking off where the seam is. It also helps to mark the midpoint. Then make a small fold halfway to the seam mark, cut the middle, and make another snip for the other two holes for the eyelets to go through. Test the eyelets to make sure that they fit nicely and put the one with the taller, I don't know, trunk <laughs> through the front so that the less pretty side is on the inside of the garment. It's hammer time! The front goes face down on the black base there and the anvil of course goes on top. This sewing board is not made for this, but it works so well to prevent big wedges in my table and absorb some of the shock, unlike my camera, you're gonna feel the brunt of this. And do that five more times. Trimming the excess. Now we take the one centimeter ribbon, cut your desired length and light the ends to prevent fraying. And snake it through in a zigzag. There are a few nice lace patterns depending on where you want to start from. I prefer this look. Give it a pretty bow, and as loopy as you want. And I love the corsettiness of this one, as you can wear it either this way or this way. Moving on to the next one, which is really the most Halloween-y, I think. The flowery lace trim with the resin and bone buttony doodad. I'm hemming in the lace edges first. Pin the face down and sew. Cut the ribbon and fold in those edges, which I then reinforce with an aesthetically pleasing X. This one will have snap fasteners. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, okay. Um <laughs> That's not gonna work, is it? <laughs> uh, let's try that again. Hello, genius. Is that the right way? I think so. Now for the weird part, or shall I say unusual, because I have never seen this before. This bone looks fairly porous, and resin and porous things do not have a good chance of turning out the way you want, so I'm using the Mod Podge scent and finish glue to seal these chicken vertebrae. I want to keep them as chalky white as possible, although I don't mind some uneven texture and color. Not long to wait until that is dry. Mix the resin. Colourpop is a brand I've never used before. This one calls for one part resin and one part hardener. Get the mold and put it in one that is deep enough, but first I like to put resin inside before the item itself to ensure that it gets totally covered. Next, I'm going to cut out some black for background. Having measured the diameter of this mold, which is 7 eighths of an inch, I was able to find that halfway mark. Sketch out a cross with the center marks in the center. <laughs> Duh. Then draw out as close to a perfect circle as I can for black polyester background. I'm using polyester because it's synthetic. Natural cloth like cotton would readily absorb resin, therefore changing its appearance. The polyester may get saturated, but at least it won't look that way. I suggest using the smaller needles. And there, an almost perfect circle that fits your mold. More resin goes on top. Once cured, pop them loose. Gotta admit, that looks really cool. Although I tried to avoid it, I got some excess on the edges, so I'm gonna clean that up, but not with my fabric scissors. Smooth that out with sandpaper. And because it makes these marks, I gotta make another batch of resin. So here's a little segment on what not to do. I need to stand these upright, and for that I'm using a sticky tack. I do want to show you how I get what I got, even with the mistakes in between, because these are prototypes and that's how I roll sometimes. Making mistakes first so you don't have to. I thought all the resin that I put on top would drip off and onto the wax paper, but instead some hung onto the bottom against the law of gravity and basically fused the tack, rendering it to the trash. Likely because there is less working time, aka gets thicker quicker. Smooth that off. This pink thing is the flip side of another silicone mold that I had kicking around. When working with resin, silicone is awesome. Gonna put another piece of polyester on it to cover the newly made hole I scratched out, but also want to add something so that I can attach it to the ribbon band. So why not bend these metal eyes down so that they attach as flat as possible, because you don't want a button that flops around. And now unlike at a quilting competition where the back has to be just as nice as the front, Well, this turned out to be a horror show. I'm gonna need counseling after this. With the needle and thread, find the center and sew it on by hand. And there she be. A very witchy set of wrist candies.
So be happy and be healthy, friends. This is Rosie. Thanks for watching. Happy Halloween! <laughs>